y'all, it's your boy J.H. Givens here. I'm Will C. And welcome to yet another episode of the Acromas Podcast, episode 103. If you are joining us, it means that you're probably listening, you're probably in your car. It's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it doesn't matter what day of the week it is. You're joining us, you're in your car, you're cleaning the house, you're listening. That means you're on Spotify, you're on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you can listen to a podcast but if you're watching us you're taking the time out to open up an app where you can literally see us speak that ad is that app is youtube here's what i want you to do i need you to hit that like button hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell you see the next time that you hop on youtube and you're looking for something to inspire you to be great inspire you to change you will see the Acromas podcast. You will probably see episode 103 or maybe the 102 other episodes that we have on YouTube. And most of all, we'll see. It is free to do so. No cost of you, but just your time. So we really would appreciate if you do those things as Jay just acts so kindly. Like our content, subscribe to it, turn on our notification bell, share our content as a matter of fact. And hey, while you're at it, stop in and look at our page. You can scroll through and see what we have. We have some reels as well for you. Give you a picture upper. Give you, uh, you know, some 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 motivational uh, need and, and give you something good and positive to go about your day. We really would appreciate that because we appreciate you. And simply, we believe each and every single one of you matter. Yes, sir. We give love. We share love. We receive love. And we're all thankful for it. We'll see what a week it has been. Um, if you're with us last Sunday, of course, we went live on the countdown. What a day that was, man. It was a well, it was an evening and then it turned into a morning. And of course, we had technical difficulties getting on there, but we were able to get the video done. We're able to communicate with you guys on IG Live. Of course, it's not going to be the last time we go live on an app. We're probably going to go live on TikTok at some point. We'll go live on IG again. We are continuing to grow and want to ensure that we're growing the right way with you. So um, as we said at the beginning of this, like, subscribe, share, um, hit the notification bell. We are we are in growing season, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it was a it was a really good episode last week. It was it was really a recap of what happened this past year with us, with the growth of Acromus, the podcast side, as well as the fitness side, as well as Acromus After Dark. Um, and then kind of what we have planned going on into this year and then everything else in between. Um, I think at least for me, um, after that episode, at least for, for the, for the week itself, you know, we always like to talk about reflection. Uh, we talk about how fleeting life can be, um, how unpredictable it is, how short it can be. Um, I know we touch base on that on the podcast, but we also want to touch base on it now, uh, especially with what happened this week. And even if you weren't into sports, you're probably not a football head like myself or a sports head like we'll see. But um, there was a incident on um, a football game this past weekend, and it was uh, it was jarring. You know, it actually had, I believe it took place. When did it take place? I think it was either this past weekend. I know it was this past week. Um, all the days are just flowing, flowing together these days, but it was a very concerning scene. Um, it was the Buffalo Bills against the, uh, Cincinnati Bengals and, um, Damar Hamlin, he's a safety for the Bengals right now. He actually took over for a safety who got injured earlier on the season and he's been playing great. I'm not a Buffalo Bills fan, but I'm a huge football fan. Um, and I love the sport in general. So, uh, it's a routine tackle. Right. There was nothing egregious of the tackle. Um, you know, the person who uh, had the ball in his hands, it was Tyler Boyd. There was no there was nothing egregious of what he did. There was nothing. There was no malintent. Um, but an incident occurred um, where DeMar Hamlin's heart stopped. And this was this was just incredibly jarring for anybody who was watching live. I can only imagine, you know, being his family and seeing that at the stadium because they were there watching him um, and just the millions around the U.S. watching the game itself because it was a big game. It was a primetime game. It was a Monday night football. Um, and just seeing that occur was jarring. You know, uh, look, injuries happen in sports in general, especially in football. You know, there's probably times where we've all seen somebody drive a cart out there to, to you know, um, place a, a player on that. They're conscious. They're going back to the locker room to figure out what's going on. Um, but this one was incredibly different. Um, you know, the very first time I remember, we'll see, I was watching it live 
And the first time, you know, Troy Aikman and Joe Buck, they're, they're the commentary team for Monday Night Football. They, the very first time the injury happened, they said, okay, we'll, we'll be back, taking a short break. We've got an injury on the field. They came back and it was still happening on the field. We say, hey, we don't we don't know much what's going on. Um, there's a there's a situation happening on the field. Uh, we'll be back again. Uh, they come back 30 minutes to a, 30 seconds to a minute. And that's when they mentioned that they are performing CPR on DeMar Hamlin on the field. And that's that is when everything changed, because there has never been a situation like that, at least during our um, lifetime where something like that happened on the field with so many different people seeing it um, and then seeing the the reactions from both the Bengals players and the Bills players, seeing Stefan Diggs cry, seeing Tredavious White cry, seeing the coach, you know, become inconsolable, seeing Josh Allen cry. Like it was, it was incredibly jarring, right? Because you see these players. I mean, if you've been to a game live, even if it isn't football, it's basketball, whatever, these players are massive, right? And you see them on TV. They, they, they appear to be larger than life characters, right? They're, they they don't appear to be human sometimes because of how big they are, because of their big personalities, uh, because of the light that we shed on these sports. We're an entertainment country, so we we put a lot of emphasis on our entertainment. So to see that happen, and it, it, it's it's a stark reminder that we are all human, um, that life is one hundred percent unpredictable, and that anything can happen. Um, I mean, God, going in. To the next day, Tuesday, I think everybody at the time was just praying. They were hoping um, that he was going to survive this, that he was going to come out of it. Um, I, I got to say, seeing it from the field, knowing that this guy was having CPR done on him for nine minutes, it just did not look good at the time. Um, but looking back on it now, knowing that DeMar Hamlin is A, awake, B, breathing on his own. He's active. He talked to his teammates um he's you know the first question the first thing that he asked when he uh you know regained consciousness and he was alive and talking again was did we win the game um and it's it's crazy I, I know some folks that might not be into sports they don't understand why that's the first question he would ask but if you're an athlete you're a competitor that is that's literally the only thing that's always on your mind um but to see that he's up he's active um of course the road to recovery is still going to be a long one. And, you know, if I'm, if I'm a DeMar, if I'm DeMar family, if I'm DeMar Hamlin's family member, I'm saying, look, take your time. This is an arduous process. Make sure that, Hey, you're coming back as a family member first. Sports are always going to be there. Let's focus on your health. Make sure you're hundred percent. You're coming back um, better than you were before, but we'll see. I would say um, out of all of this, I cannot remember a time where there was so much unity in a country other than the day after 9-11, honestly. Um, I think we've been through so much in this country, especially when it comes to division, that seeing the floodgates of prayers and thanks and for him to for to get, I think it was 3.5 million the last time I checked at a charity that he that he adds, even though they were looking for only, you know, a couple thousand, it is it is absolutely heartwarming. Um, and it, it just goes to show you that at the end of the day, we're all human. Um, we are all capable of love, even though it seems like we are at the capacity of loving in our society right now. Um, it just it just goes to show you uh, that life is short, life is fleeting, and we can all come together um, if we are unified in an effort. Yeah, um, three things uh, come to mind. And it's live, learn, and love. And and I feel as though, um, you know, in that moment, we were able to kind of experience each of those moments um, as a whole. It's just, it's just human beings. Uh, in that moment of just uncertainty, once it did come back and we, we all heard about, you know, CPR was being, you know, given to Damar Allen. It was um, startling. Uh, I, I, it, it was something, yeah, we, we definitely hadn't seen before. Um, at least not on such a, on a global stage um, within the NFL. Um, and for once, you know, it, 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 everyone united uh, because everyone cared about our life. And um, <clears throat> to me, it just it was a uh, symbolization of hope and of, you know, perseverance and, and that, you know, we live in a world where 
you know, people still do care about one another. And that was the biggest takeaway for me. Uh, and, you know, it's praying even that night, you know, everyone's rattled. It's hard to sleep uh, just because you just you just want you just hoping and just hoping and praying, uh, you know, that that, you know, he prevailed. He, he comes through this for his family's sake, um, for anyone that's close to him. And just in general, you know, to make you think about anyone that's been through that and um, or anything, anything close to it and just wanting the best for them. Um, and I think it's such a shock because, again, a lot of the times you look at a scenario such as that, where you have athletes who are kind of like at the top level, the top, you know, apex of like just being on their health and just being the best of the best. And, you know, to, to realize that that can happen to someone like that just abruptly, just really drives home the fact of just how delicate life is for all humans. Um, so it was a moment that we'll never forget. Um, totally understand what you, what you mentioned by like, you know, in unison of us, everyone coming together. And it's good to see that because it, because it's kind of feel as of late, we haven't had that. So through an unfortunate turn of events, something beautiful has come from it. And I just hope that we can continue as, a, as people to, to, to keep each other uplifted, not just when something happens uh, to, to one of us, but keep all of us uplifted because again, the world is beautiful mm. and it can be a beautiful place to live in it if we all choose it together and take care of one another, look out for one another. And, uh, you know, you know, so grateful and thankful that he is making progress in the right direction. And, you know, just want to send a prayer out to him, his family, anyone else out there in need of it, who may experience any sort of shortcoming or adversity in their life today. Um, so you know, we're sending that love you, you guys' way too. Um, and, and, you know, I think it was just a good way to just be, um, grateful, be thankful, you know, you know, to again, live, love and learn with one another. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. We'll see. Um, it, it was very encouraging. I mean, I know we were, we we're all in a group chat, a, a group chat with texting, um, and each and every day, right. Somebody in there is giving him an, is giving us an update. Hey guys, he's doing better. Hey guys, he's, he's talking, he's breathing on his own. The tubes have been removed. Hey guys, he's FaceTime and his team. Like it's and it's encouraging for us because again, at the end of the day, we're human. Regardless, regardless, of, we're men, right? So we're we're always expected to be macho and strong and fierce and not show emotion. Um, it's it's kind of how we were raised, at least for us. But to see to see that none of that mattered in this case, and the only thing that matters is that this young man recovered. Um, it's very it's very inspiring to see and and seeing the world come together at this moment. Um, to to give prayers to, to I mean there were people there there were people at ESPN who were praying on live television you know like saying an actual prayer that's dope that's huge that's big and I, I think it's important I think it's important that we that we understand like hey don't let this be an anomaly right don't let this week be something that you don't always do that you're not always praying for each other you're not always uplifting each other don't make don't make it a habit to to wish for somebody else's downfall. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's very encouraging. We'll see. And I'm glad that we got to see this, this sort of unifying effort, regardless of politics or gender or race, everybody coming together and praying for this young man. And, um, I, I, I really pray that he continues to recover, um, that he continues to, to build back his strength up and whatever he decides to do with his read the rest of his life. Uh, we will never forget that night and the subsequent recovery that he's been going through. So, it's incredible. Look, and of course, we, you know, not only with the Acromus podcast, but we do have Acromus After Dark, where again, we do talk about some controversial topics and conversations. And it's it's on our Patreon right now. Um, if you're not aware, last week we did talk about um if slavery was a choice. Um, that episode is still live. You can go ahead and interact with it. You just have to join our Patreon, um, depending on what tier you're interested in being a part of. Um, and you can join that conversation as well. But we are also going to talk about the question, does God exist? You know, and I think I think around this time now, especially what we went through last week, um, it's a great question for our audience. We'll see. Yeah, um, it's going to be <laughs> quite the topic. Um, if if you had an opportunity to listen to our After Dark um, episode, uh, Slavery of Choice, it was very profound and, and, and um, 
yeah, a, a lot of um, truth just being shared, nothing filtered, just raw um, opinion of, uh, you know, what we really believed. And uh, was welcoming to everyone else as well that had, had um, opinions of their own to share with it and, and a really good discussion. So if you haven't had a chance, please definitely want you to check that out. Um, and uh, yeah, the topic that we'll be discussing, you know, in reference to God is going to be just another one. Another one of those moments of just raw, uncut, un unbiased, just fully just opinionated approach to what we believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're looking forward to the feedback that we're going to receive from that too and the discussions that we'll have about it because Boy, is that one heck of a topic. So it's going to be one uh, one to remember for sure. Yeah. No, it's exciting, man. I, I love I love these Acromas After Dark episodes. It's an opportunity for us to be. I mean, look, the Acromas podcast is raw, too. Don't get me wrong. We are very raw in the Acromas podcast. But there's another level when you come into conversations like that and like slavery being a choice. I mean, it's these are these are incredibly controversial topics that require a conversation. Uh, so that's exactly what we're bringing to the table when it comes to Acromas After Dark. So stay tuned for that next episode. Um, it's going to be incredible, man. It's going to be a, a a learning lesson for both of us. And for those out there who want to be a part of that episode, just join our Patreon and you're welcome to write in. Uh, but for this week on the Acromas podcast, you know, one of the toughest things to, to handle, we'll see, especially if you're going into this new year in 2023, um, we all have our New Year's resolutions. Now, I would say New Year's resolutions have become controversial now, and there are a lot of people now who poo-poo on New Year's resolutions because they say, well, I'm living my life. I don't need to make a resolution because it's, you know, it's it does not matter to me. I am so goal oriented that I never fail. I am um, I am a top performer in everything I do. And kudos to you. However, on the other side of that, I would say that goal setting is paramount if you are going to be successful with anything that you set in life, especially if you're trying to get towards your purpose. There has to be a strategy. There has to be a path that you're taking. And along that path, there are going to be a lot of pitfalls. And we all know that we deal with pitfalls, but there might be some instances where we don't necessarily know how to deal with them. And if your if your new year's resolution had anything to do with fitness whether you're trying to build strength you're trying to get in more shape or better shape um you're trying to lose weight you're trying to decrease your body fat percentage whatever you're trying to do there is going to be something that you are going to deal with and we're going to tell you that right now before we make any other moves there're going to be some very very bad urges that you're going to have to get through and it's important that you understand to control those urges. You have to understand that you are able to acknowledge those urges when they do come about um, and then having to deal with them as you continue to make progress towards your goals or towards your purpose. You must have a roadmap. And here at Acromas, we want to become your foundation for that roadmap. So we'll see. I can't wait to dive into this episode. Let's just jump right in. Look I, it's no stranger. I am no stranger to, to fitness, no stranger to dieting or, or, or trying to get in shape. It is, it has been my life since I was 12. And if you've seen any of the other episodes that we've talked about, even the ones that Will C has shared his story um, on his transition. And if you don't know much about it, the 21, three method will tell you everything you need to know. Um, it was, it is always difficult, you know, I mean, even even now, right, even when you are losing weight or you understand what your purpose is, you still got those urges, right? We're human, right? And, and the thing about habits is that you can replace them, but you can never break them. They're always going to be there. And it is important that if you understand the strategy that you're building to make sure that you aren't falling back into those bad habits and you have a better chance of remaining successful. Um, so for me, in my past, we'll see. Um, it's been well documented that I had a um, a very emotional relationship with food. Um, it was a very bad relationship for a very long period of time. Um, and you know, for those who have seen the other episodes, I I used to use food as a way to get by, um, as a way to feel numb, um, and. 
you know, I've thank God I've grown from that point. Um, and I'm, I'm in a better mental state than I was at that particular time. But uh, the reason I bring that up is because, of course, on the Acromas podcast, we we speak from experience. We speak on what we've gone through and how we've grown from that. Um, so for me, at least when I'm speaking on nutrition, um, there were a couple things that I had to implement myself to understand how I might be able to control the bad urges that I had. Now, in order for me to do that, I personally had to understand that I had bad urges. I had to understand that there is something in my life that was blocking me from making the best decision for my health, the best decision to for me to be able to move towards my purpose. So what was it at that time, right? And I figured out, okay, it's my nutrition. Why am I eating the way I am? I'm eating this way because I want to be numb because I don't want to have to deal with what's going on in my life. I don't want to have to take responsibility to change what's going on in my life because I'm afraid. I'm afraid of the unknown. I'm afraid of what I'm going to have to go through. I'm afraid that I'm not going to be well-equipped enough to continue my path towards my purpose. So why don't I just numb myself here? Why don't I stay in this cyclical rotation of self-sabotage where I don't have to worry about my nutrition I don't have to worry about living much longer, right? Like there was a time where I was hoping that I would eat so much one day that I would not wake up from that food coma that I would go into. And then it would be all over, right? The pain that I was feeling inside that you can't, you there, there, there isn't anything that you can do to ignore that pain because it is ever present and it always comes back. So I I learned that at some point I had to deal with it head on. I knew it was going to be very difficult. It was going to be an arduous path. It was going to be a journey that would take years and years for me to, to truly heal. But I knew I had to take that journey because I knew my purpose was much larger than laying in a bed close to death every single time that I eat crappy food. So knowing that, I understood that I had to remove myself from where I was and transition to who I wanted to become because of what I knew what my purpose was. So in order to do that, I had to take notes and and see exactly what I was doing that allowed me to eat all this bad food. I, I, I now knew that the reason why I went to this was because I was, I was either celebrating a new accomplishment that I had, um, whether it was in fitness or at work or on the flip side of that, I was so stressed out that I did not want to deal with anything. There was no other outlet for me to get rid of the stress that I was going through. So I was going to rely on food and it wasn't going to be good food. No, it was going to be wings, pizza, waffles, syrup, soda, burgers. That's all it was. That was strictly what I was consuming. So in order for me to be able to control those bad urges, because I know what my purpose is now, I, of course, had to change that. And the mistake that I do see a lot of people making is that they want to change cold turkey. They want to go from one day consuming all of this bad food to the next day, eating kale, chips, and drinking salad juice. It is not going to work out for you. I can tell you right now, it is not going to work out long term. You might be able to do that for a good three to five days, but eventually you're going to revert back to your bad habits because that is your sanctum. That is what you hold on to. That is what you know works for you. So for me, I had to make sure that I whittled down exactly what I was doing. I knew how much I was eating. I knew the amount of calories I was consuming. I know the types of food I was consuming. But I knew if I was going to sustain myself and be able to move away from this, I had to cut it down 1% at a time instead of just cutting cold turkey, especially because it's a purpose for me, right? Right. It's no longer a diet. It's a nutritional change. It's a lifestyle change. So if I'm going to be doing this forever, I have to make sure that I'm able to sustain it forever. So that was something that was very important for me. So the the first thing that I did, we'll see, is I said, okay, I am not going to eat a Five Guys burger every day. I'm going to eat it twice a week. I'm going to eat a Five Guys burger twice a week. I'm not going to eat waffles every single time I leave the gym. I'm going to have waffles maybe once or twice a week for breakfast. I'm going to limit the amount of syrup I use. I'm going to limit the amount of waffles I eat in one sitting. 
I'm going to continue to cut it down until I am now no longer reliant on this food, until I can replace those bad um, those bad food groups that I'm consuming um, and transition it into cleaner foods, into healthier foods, because I understand what my purpose is. I will allow myself proof because I will now see that not only is my physical physique changing a little bit, but I'm feeling better. I'm more energetic. I don't want to run upstairs in my bed after eating anymore. I want to run outside. I want to get other things done. I want to be able to communicate with more people. I, I want to love on my wife. I want to do so many other things now because I have the energy that I did not have before. I'm eating food for fuel instead of for crashing. And so changing that mentality allowed me to transition from what I was eating at that time into having a more balanced nutrition plan now. And it's not to say that there aren't days where I don't implement certain foods that I had before, but because I understand how to control myself a little more, because I understand what my purpose is, because my physical body has changed, I no longer, I no longer desire those types of foods. So I can control my urges, I can control myself and understanding that my purpose is bigger than what I was consuming before. And now I'm on a transition period where I am seeing the growth, I'm seeing the progress. So now in turn, I'm more motivated to continue to grow, right? If I'm seeing what I'm doing is changing my life and it's making it for the better, I am more enticed to continue to improve myself, we'll see. And the other side of that token, the one other thing that I saw in myself was that the route that I took home every single day after work dictated what I consumed. And it's crazy to think about it that way. But once you start looking into yourself and you start looking and seeing some of the habits that you have, you understand, OK, these are some of the triggers that I have. So literally me changing my exit on the freeway from 15A to 15B transition everything for me whereas before i would drive past five guys taco bell mcdonald's burger king um god there there are so many different things that i pass by and because i wasn't healthy within myself it would be an, inc an incredibly difficult decision to say no and i and most of the time i did not but literally going the other right the other route rather provided this this concept of out of sight out of mind and we all know that concept but being able to to literally see it occur in myself was so powerful we'll see that now that i have all of these fast food places out of sight i no longer think about consuming those foods and that was such a powerful thing for me to understand that i have control over my own life and there's nothing or nobody who can stand in my way from achieving what I want to achieve. That was so incredibly powerful for me, we'll see. So for me, that is how I was able to control my bad urges, was to remove myself completely from the old person to who I was, to the real person that I was. I no longer had the scapegoat of, of trying to, to devour food to the point of feeling numb. I now consume food because I know my body is a temple and I want to I want to remain as energetic as I am, as happy as I feel. And then on the flip side, making sure that things are out of sight, out of mind for me helped me so much because I, I now no longer have to purposefully tell myself I can't stop there. I don't see it. It's not there. So why would I even think about something that I cannot see? So that is what helped me. We'll see on this journey on the path that I've been on and, and getting closer and closer to achieving my purpose and, and realizing it has been so beneficial for that journey, man. Message. Um, and I'm sure it's so relatable to everyone out there. So it's related to myself um, as well, Evan X Pat, and being someone that lost almost about close to a hundred pounds when I began my journey. Uh, so I totally uh, understand what, what you've, through in your journey and uh you continue to be a support system uh on that and i remember you know you had a conversation with me about that part of what you were struggling with in in silence and 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 as you you knew realize i just don't know but have that conversation is, is making accept 
what you're dealing with when you're having those urges and those things that you're trying to overcome that aren't any habits for you. Um, I, I, I wanted to go on even more to, to what Jay was saying, guys. Um, you know, I don't want to speak on, I don't have to speak on what I was going through, but something that we all can relate along the lines of what Jay just mentioned. Like, you know, there are a few things I want you all to think about, you know, along the lines of this, and we must be mindful uh, if you just kind of recollect what we just listened to. A few takeaways would be, uh, you know, recognizing that, you know, there is a there is a, a, an issue or something that it has become habitual for you as a process, albeit good, bad, but something that has attention, right? If you're able to do that, then you're, you're capable to make the acceptance as to recognizing, you know, okay, there's some, you know, things I need to work on, some things I need to change for myself to be better or, you know, just address because um, it's there. We know it's there. We we'll tend to avoid it because we don't want to have to deal with it because a lot of the times in life, it's easy to just go to the current, right? You know what it's, what it's for. So it makes it a little harder. So for me, uh, you know, I, I think those are some uh, pointers there to really kind of think about. Also, uh, you know, put it into perspective. You know, and Jay, I know you can relate to this. Um, just think of it as like a building, right? You want to, you want to, you want to build a building. Um, you have the cement. You, 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 you have your bricks. Uh, you know, you have your smear, so you can lay everything you need to lay. And let's just say, you know, you're, you're building along that way, right? Now, these are a habit that you're creating for yourself, right? The build, building is the metaphor of the habit. So you're creating that habit as you're going along. Now, what happens when you're building these things, but you don't have proper structure, proper planning, don't have a good infrastructure to know exactly what you're doing along the way, it's bound to crumble because you didn't have a stable foundation to know what you were doing. You didn't check the cement of the bricks. You didn't see exactly how much you're smearing for your clay. You don't, you, it's a lot that you're not paying attention to. So, Often we tend to do that when we're creating those, things, and that ultimately define whether it's a good or bad habit for you. You would know that, right? Um, you know, I don't want to single anyone out here. If you, you, you're someone who maybe indulge in a little bit of a drink here or there, right? Uh, where you you, you want to understand the difference. Is this something that you're doing that's habitual, or okay, is this something recreational? Uh, you know, based on maybe your party or or is it something that you're using as a substance to deal with what you're feeling emotionally? So a lot of those instances that we go through that, where we're filling a void because we don't want to deal with whatever those things are. But if you are at a place where you're willing to accept it, once you've acknowledged it, and you know, now you're at the place where, okay, I know I have this, this habit and I want to uh, manifest something better I, I i gotta shift it away because earlier a habit necessarily it doesn't just go away it's that, that need for it is always there but your desire to be better than what that need is must open it, but you have to plan properly so that you can win every time almost so you know you take those steps you go create the blueprint that you need for that building you start outlining you start making sure that you you, you have a plan in place that's going to make sure that as you begin to build what you need, it'll, the foundation will be stable and you won't have to worry about it crumbling. You may have times where things may crack over a bit, but you have the all you need. And you, could, you can restruct that blueprint the way you need it to re-smooth out that foundation to keep it going and keep it sustainable. But that's a choice. You're choosing to do each part of that along the way. Like you're choosing to indulge into a habit that's not good for you, or you're choosing to fight through that and to create something better for yourself. Everything we do is a choice. So I think uh, embracing the power of that in the habit is really important because sometimes you can get along the way with something and not realize that you formulated it into a habit until you're at a point where you have to address it. Um, the, and, and, and and again, I have it broad because we all have different things that we deal with that has become habitual for us in one way or another. Um, but a lot of it, a lot of the times have to do with how we feel about ourselves. That's really the truth. It's more, more of emotional, more of a mental health aspect to that process where, you know, we, we're creatures, we're creatures by habit you know, of, of nature. So like we tend to drift more toward feel 
need, you know, a desire of a want rather than, right, yeah, rather than a need itself. Mm -hmm. So it, it's really good to just reflect, time, just take a step back, check in with yourself in your life, see where you are, mm -hmm. assess those things that, that you feel need to make some then start making the proper plannings. Maybe even if it's something that's sitting down of pros of that the habit that you have is, how does it benefit long-term? How does it help you today? And what are you getting from it that ultimately is healthy for you? A, health, a healthy part of that habit that you have. And if it's something that you realize that you part ways with, as 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 Jay mentioned, what did he do? Which I thought was excellent. Found a different route home, a different route. Just avoid that. Not that you're not taking it head on, but you're strategically allowing yourself to build with all that you need to be sustainable, so that you can face these adversities and be strong in your belief and you know and your determination that this will get the better of me this time. Whatever it is, um, this goes for so many avenues for people dealing with all addiction because I think that's what it is. It becomes an addiction, and those are hard to break. But that doesn't mean it's possible to do it. But you have to choose you along the way. You have to choose and know that you are so damn and you matter. Most, um, and how you feel about yourself is key. And listen to the last part of what I want to mention about religion. Along the way, you build the motivation and confidence in yourself because you believe in the impossible that what you thought you couldn't do. And now you right you're doing it, you're gonna have momentum. You sustain the momentum by continuing to invest into you, continuing to adapt and adjust your methods to what's going with you and how you feel. Sometimes you gotta sit up a little bit, right? Because you could tend to slip back, but then how how are you gonna bounce? back from that like what can you do to change the element of was 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 occurring that could be a thing you know the healthy habit that you're trying to establish you know uh maybe it's people that you're around maybe you need to like isolate yourself or you know, put yourself around a group a different group of people who have a different group of uh, thought and think um and sometimes that kind of helps you know with you as well the environment that you're in, the environment you're around um all these things play a role with just making sure that you're doing the best you can to take care of yourself in a way um, for you. And only you know that. Um, you know, you can, you can lie to some of the people some of the time, but you can't lie to yourself. That's the one thing you can't do. When you look yourself in the mirror, you you know what morally is right or wrong for you. Um, and if it don't feel right, then do something about it. Use that power of choice today. Uh, make an adjustment. It's not going to be an overnight process, and I think that's – something that people have to realize is like when we're looking to make a change about something it isn't a process it's gonna it's gonna be tedious it's gonna take some planning it's gonna take some commitment it's gonna take some accountability it's mm -hmm. gonna take that ownership and that drive and that willingness to choose you to to do it and there's no feeling more rewarding than to know you earned way to accomplishing what it is that you desired and if we're talking about building a health a healthy habit restructuring a habit uh, to be something that's beneficial to you, how good that feels when you've arrived at that moment. And you know when you're there, you'll know. And then at that part, truth be told, that's when the real work starts. Because mm -hmm. you know, that, that part was planning and executing. And once you've executed your doing, you have to keep moving forward. So you have to continue to, to implement your methods to sustain that. Or well, otherwise, in Jay's case, can go back to the routes he was making. He can go back to the routes he was doing. He can go back to eating the way he was eating. And it's easy to slip off that, which it never goes away. However, he's, he's in brave power of choice. He's held himself accountable. He's accepted that he has something that he deals with that he has to fight every day. Mm -hmm. um, but he chooses himself and he wins because of it. And you can too. Um, and we believe you will. You know, because you matter. So I'll leave it there, man. I didn't want to go into detail of example myself. I felt as though you provide a wonderful example in yourself um, and something that's relatable for everyone. Just wanted to add on those pointers because you, again, to stabilize that build that you desire to have, and that foundation you need, you got to make sure you're in a solid and then execute it and then move forward to make sure that building is being sustained. Mm, that's a great analogy. We'll see. Um, 
building. Yes, I mean, as you know, Acroma serves as the, as the foundation of a restart, a refresh in your life. Um, and that that is essentially what this is here, right? I, I restarted. I found out who I really was. I understand the real me and there are certain things that the real me does and should not do based on what my purpose is, right? If if everything is all in alignment with my purpose, I should never have an issue to do whatever it takes to achieve that. And it took me a while to recognize that. And um, when it comes to building, yes, I mean, the foundation, and then you're either erecting your steel or your wood, and then you're, you know what I'm saying, you're putting in your insulation, you're you're building out a home, you're building out a fortress of solitude. And the thing about it is, right, when we are renovating, when we are remodeling, when we're making a few tweaks here because certain things no longer work, we are not tearing apart the entire place. We are not completely removing the foundation. It's still there. The foundation is still there. You might you might blow out the walls. You might redo the roof. You might remodel the kitchen, right? In your life, you might you might your goal might change a little, right? Instead of losing fifty pounds, maybe eh, maybe you want to reduce forty. Instead of wanting to build, you know, twenty five inch biceps, I'm okay with nineteen. You're tweaking each and every time, but the foundation never changes, right? The standard is always the standard, 100%. So we'll see. That was a great analogy. And yes, it's always great to be able to share stories because that is what Acromus is all about. That is what we fully believe in. We believe in using the stories that we have gone through, right? Using the Using our lives as examples because we are no different than you are. So we hope that you find encouragement, you find inspiration in what we talk about and the stories that we share on the Acromas podcast. And now we want to turn it over to you for you to be able to share your story. Right now, we want to know exactly how do you control those bad urges? The best response will not only be featured in the next episode of the Acromas podcast, but look, we'll see or I will even make a YouTube short about your comment. And we will direct it, we will direct it directly back to you. Um, and we would share that with our community and with the world. Uh, so, of course, that's what we're always doing, especially in 2023. We are or we are giving back. We're continuing to share. We're continuing to encourage our community uh, to speak out more, to be more vigilant, to be more progressive, to continue to build those foundations and those healthy habits and understanding what goal setting means to, to get towards the purpose that you are trying to achieve. So again, we want to thank you for joining us on this episode of Chromas Podcast, episode 103. If you are listening, it means that you are listening on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or even Spotify. You're watching our beautiful smiling faces. It can only mean one thing. It means you're watching us on YouTube. So here's what I want you to do. If you did not do this at the beginning of this episode, and I'll help you spell it out just in case you were wondering exactly what to do here. It is A-C-H-R-O-M-O-U-S. You see it right there on that background that we'll see is showing. You can find us anywhere that you can leer a podcast. If you're watching it, I need you to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. The next time that you hop on YouTube and you see a hunt, you see the 103rd episode of the Acromas podcast, you will understand that you're in the right place. You are beginning to control those urges so that you continue on the path to understanding what your true purpose is. And most of all, we'll see. I think you might be on mute. We'll see. Oh, well, all right. See, I have to work. <laughs> Want to make sure we're sharing those gems. <laughs> this, you're going to create a new habit today. You're going to start and do it because it's free to do so. Yes. And I like our content. Turn on that notification bell. Subscribe to our content that we're dropping the gym each and every single week. Give them to you because we believe you matter. You're going to share it as well. We really appreciate that. Well, our reels is too. We got some motivational gems again that we drop it to you on a regular basis, just as a picker upper to remind you of how much you matter when you need it every day at any. 100% we'll see. Look, it is going to be a great week for you. You're going to learn how to control those bad urges because now you have a place to go to help you do that. And that is the Acromas podcast. We love being a part of your life. We continue to pray that you are a part of ours 
every single day. Until next week, it is your boy, J.H. Gibbons. And we'll see. Yeah.